Wake up. I have to talk to myself. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> you can show that, leave that in the uh, video. Good morning, everyone. Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. CC to my right. Louis, uh, the extreme right. We have Tristan and uh, Jerry monitoring the cameras and the sound. So if you don't like the video or the sound, blame them. <laughs> we're just here for the content. Anyway, so um, today we're going to talk about the Amadi G5 from Sonus Faber. We received these speakers approximately a week and a half ago or so, and then we've been breaking them in for quite a while. Um, the guys will insert some pictures and show you what they look like. And also, if you want to know more details, uh, by by now you will have we would have uploaded a video that I did describing some of the uh, changes and 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 uh, specifications and innovations that uh, Sonus Faber has done with the G5 compared to the previous generation, as well as the Guaneri, which will probably are be our next video or one of the next videos anyway. So uh, to get onto it, it's thirty-six thousand U.S. dollars. The speakers are named after Niccolo Amadi, who's a master luthier in the seventeenth century. He was also the teacher for uh, Guaneri as well as um, Stradivarius. Uh, okay, and the speakers come in three finishes: Wangi, Red, and Graphite, uh, which we haven't received yet. Hopefully soon. Okay. Um, Louis, do you want to start or CC starts? CC, you go ahead first. Or H before beauty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> H before. <laughs> All right, so you start, Louis. All right, Louis, why don't I say, well, why, because, because I remember you inadvertently blurted something out when, when the speakers were first connected. And that's, the, that's as far as we got in terms of discussing the speakers. Other than that, I don't know what he thinks. Louis, what was your first impression when you heard the speakers other than saying Bamba Claude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, first thing um, I would describe it as exalting and impressive exalting uh, and impressive wow and impressive um, the first thing what hit me when um, I connected it um, was the bass it was no, so no, no, much no, no. more bias oh sorry the bias <laughs> <laughs> it was so much more powerful than the previous generation the G4 um, Amati and then it was and we had them side by side so I was switching them and you could hear the difference right off the bat um, the bass was more powerful the mid-range was just on top of the world um, treble about the same not much difference but um, overall Wow. Okay, so that's your first impression. Um, describe your reaction to your favorite music. I know you like to play uh, specific cuts because you know them very well. Um, what cuts did you use um, that gave you that impression? Um, for vocal, I went back to uh, Karen Carpenter, which is back in the early 70s when I first heard her sing she's incredible oh i man. love her voice angelic do voice know, do you know karen carpenter no oh wow <laughs> i played remember i played it for you in the other room and you said your mom oh that's, that's all. karen carpenter oh. yeah oh, but wow. she has many beautiful songs okay. um i played um close to you um oh the the the, the mid-range is just it's just over the top um as you know, Adrian described how they got this mid-range to sound extra good by drilling the compartment um, up to the tweeter. Um, so that has brought out so much more, um, you know, breathtaking, silky smoothness of the mid-range, which to me is just, oh, it's just so beautiful. But I think, anyways, I think, I think Lewis is going to overcome Philip's wordsmith uh, <laughs> reputation soon. No, so breathtaking. Anyway, wow, wow, I know. So the, the um, Karen Carpenter, the first time I heard her was um, when I was a DJ, um, and one of the um, guys in the in the what had the um, the our disco, um, he his sister um, had a sweet sixteen party, and. Um, she, for some reason, I don't know where this album came from, but we just played a few of the tracks on the, the um, Carpenter's album with um, featuring, of course, Karen Carpenter and her brother Richard, who played piano. 
And it just brought back so much memories of, of how beautiful her voice is. I hear it almost every day when we're playing Rune um, title and Rune for some reason just keeps playing <laughs> her songs over and over and I just can't get tired of them. I, I just love them. That's amazing. Um, I played it some of uh, Whitney Houston tracks as well. Mm. Oh, what a voice. Mm -hmm. um, as how Adrian was describing um, Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin was so slim. I, I mean, sometimes I have to do a double take um, on her as well. I played some of her songs. Um, I remember my cousin coming from, she's, she's from in New York. She's um, a U.S. citizen born there as well. And they would come to Jamaica for, um, for summer holidays. And she would play on our stereo system. Um, she would bring records down and she would play Aretha Franklin. I'm going, wow, this lady can sing. You know, and of course, the big song, Respect, and I'm going, mm. <laughs> but anyways, um, those those just evoked a lot of memories to me from back in the early, um, late 60s and early 70s um, with those songs. I mean, just beautiful. So, uh, um, did you find... <clears throat> Uh, much similarities between the Amadi versus the Serafinos, which we did a video of recently? The Amadi is so much bigger in sound versus the um, the Serafino. Um, I would say the Serafino would work well in a smaller room. The Amatis would need a bigger room. Yeah. yeah. The bass response is... is, is, is Unbelievable. It's killer, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is unbelievable. It, it's easy to for us to tell people about this, yeah. but unless they come and hear it themselves. Experience it, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's, it, 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 it's, it's powerful. Okay, all right. Cece, your turn. What did you think of the Amadis? I totally agree with what Louis was saying about um, how when you listen to the music, it brings back memories. And also, uh, he, you mentioned Aretha Franklin. Uh, I want to point out the song I played was Amazing Grace. So when I started playing it, uh, you could hear the crowds wowing, and you could hear the crowds clapping on the side. It just feels like you're also in the church. You're one of the audience. You can see Aretha singing with her beautiful voice when she opens up her mouth. And you could hear the breath that she takes. It's amazing how you hear so much detail. It makes you feel like you're actually in the church with her. You're in the crowd. And uh, also, I also played, what else did I play? I also played both, both sides now. Um, both I now it's from Joni Mitchell. So she is a one of she I think she was one of the best female singer at the era of 1960s because she has this very beautiful and very uh, beautiful soprano sound, uh, voice. And she released her first album when she was 23 years old and the song was about how uh, when you find love, you're very happy, and then in the end, uh, it falls apart, all the bubbles pop, and you, you don't know what love is, so it's both sides now. And then uh, she also released another al album, I'm not uh, another album, she released a song again when she was about 58 years old, 30 years later. and. I listen to both of these songs with the speakers. It's so, it's dramatically different. It's so dramatic, her voice and also um, the emotions in her voice. The first song, it's more, uh, it gives you like a breezing feel. It's very light and her voice is very beautiful. And then 30 years later, her voice is smoky and she has a much, deeper and thicker voice and when she sings it you could feel that the emotions 
in her voice and also the tone in her voice has changed. You could tell stories from her voice, from mm. her singing. You tell, tell stories from her voice. Yeah. Wow. You, you, you can tell that she must have been through so much. And now that her singing is much more powerful. And especially when you know about the story of the of the singer, you actually gain a lot of insights. You also you, you can learn from the songs. And when, when you play with a good speaker, uh, it gives you more, what, what, what's that word? It gives you a lot more insights and you feel more connected with the singer, right? And then I also played a couple of fun songs that I usually enjoy, like, um, I played songs from Jen Legend, All of Me, uh, Adele, Hello, and also uh, Another Day of Sun from the movie La La Land. So when I was listening to these songs, I, you know, when you taste something very good, you would say that you're, you're like having party in your mouth. When I play these songs, I felt like I was having a party in my ears because it's so joyful. You feel so relaxed. So... What, how would you describe when you are listening to a song? You st- I think the best way to describe you actually enjoy the music is you start tapping your feet, you start nodding your head. You, you cannot control it because you're brought to the music and you just feel very relaxed and you stay in the in the room and listen to these music for hours. You, you don't even realize the time. So that, that was my impression of the speakers. Comparing to the Serafino, I felt like it's much more stronger. While the mid-range, the vocals are quite similar because I believe that they have the same uh, face plug technology. And uh, obviously the bass was much more powerful uh, because it's a bigger speaker. Well, I don't know how to follow both of you. <laughs> <laughs> the bar has been set. <laughs> <laughs> well, I usually go under the bar anyway. So, um, so I, I, I guess I'll start off by saying uh, I've had the great fortune of owning all five generations now, including this one. And, and of course, m- all of them are distant memories now, except for the last generation, which is still very fresh. But the first one, I, I recall being in love with the speaker because it had such a seductive quality. It was mellow, it was smooth. It, it made certain kinds of music so beautiful that you couldn't help but love what you heard. The, the problem was that then when you played other sorts of music. So, for example, it, it, it worked really well with simple vocals, uh, uh, string quartets, um, you know, light music that wasn't necessarily too demanding when it came to dynamics, bass power, you know, hard rock and things like this, which um, uh, I didn't yet play at the time. But when I did, I suddenly realized the speakers couldn't do that genre very, very well. But other than that, it was beautiful. Um, and then following generations were improvements over that uh, consistently. And then when I got to generation four, the uh, last generation, I thought, wow, this is superb. This now allows me to enjoy most of the music I love with uh, conviction. It, it was no longer uh, necessary to make any kind of apologies. You could play all sorts of music and still with acoustic and classical, it still did that so well. Um, so... Um, when the G5 came and um, I sneaked a bit of listening when Lewis was playing it, I uh, in my head I was thinking I was starting to get really excited because perhaps for the very first time, Sonus Farber has very, very few obvious weaknesses now. It, it can slam with the best of them. It will go deep with authority, uh, conviction, and clarity in the bass that before it didn't quite have um it'll play edm all day long it'll play rap if you like that um and yet it'll also turn on a dime and play uh sweet soft romantic music if that's what you like i was uh, quite truly stunned I'll, I'll give you some um examples 
I started off as usual playing my regular test tracks and very quickly realized, boy, it's swimming through all of these so easily. I, I, I stopped very quickly thinking there's no more point. Uh, you know, any audiophile who's interested in going through all of that, listen to these speakers with your favorite tracks and you'll hear what I think I heard. Um, um, I, I wrote down here, go through all the typical audio categories and the Amadi will easily score eight to nine out of 10 consistently. So I was very impressed. And then the question that immediately popped in my mind was, how about the ability to communicate? Um, what? How does it do uh, for emotion, for, for stirring me up, happy, sad, all that kind of stuff? So I'll give you some examples of what I did. Um, I think I, I mentioned in an earlier video, I was driving to a client's to do a Wilson install one day. And as usual, when I'm in the car, I'll play uh, podcasts or stories and so on just to entertain me or to learn something. And that day I had YouTube playing in the background. And there was this um, YouTube program talking about the five best songs to play at a funeral, <laughs> or five or 10, I can't remember. I'm thinking, when I saw that tagline before I drove, I thought, who the hell does a video like this? And I thought, I got to watch this. <laughs> the, 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 the crazy in me. So I, I, I played it and I'm driving. And then he names his five top songs. And one of them was, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, um, with, uh, anyway, it'll come to my mind. And then it was, number one was George Jones, He Stopped Loving Her Today. And I thought, I haven't heard this song. And I thought I knew George Jones quite well. So country uh, singer, um, so I, I uh, after after his video was over, <clears throat> I found the track and I played it, and this is the story in, behind the lyrics. Um, it's about a man <clears throat> whose ex left him. They don't talk about whether or not it was a, a, it was a wife, left him, and he never stopped loving her until he died. So that's why the title he stopped loving her today. He he loved her until the day he died. Um, so here, here's some of the lyrics. This is uh, quite crazy. He said, I'll love you till I die. She told him, you'll forget in time. As the years went slowly by, she still prayed upon his mind. He kept her picture on his wall, went half crazy now and then, but he still loved her through it all, hoping she'd come back again. He stopped loving her today. They placed a wreath upon his door, and soon they'll carry him away. He stopped loving her today. So I'm listening to this thing, and I stop bawling. I'm thinking, oh my God. You know, because, and, and the crazy thing is this. <clears throat> Normally, with great audiophile systems, uh, if the recording's no good, um, you hear how bad the recording is, and that can stop you from enjoying the music. <laughs> With these speakers, you instantly know it's not a great record. Uh, the recording quality is not that great. It's not bad. It's not great. But despite that, the the performance of George Jones comes right through, and I could hear the lyrics so clearly that it evokes such incredible emotion out of me. Um, and that's something that I thought, my God, this is. While the previous generation could do that very well, this current generation takes a whole different step uh, uh, forward. Um, and then over the last few days, one of, my, one of my fondest memories about my father was he and I, towards the end of his life, would share a lot of time listening to music together. Uh, he one of his favorite uh, uh, pieces of music was Beethoven's Symphony Number no. Six. It's called the Pastoral. Um, so Beethoven reportedly went to uh, the country and wrote a symphony about um, what he saw in the country. And movement number four is about the storm. Storm happens and, and it's very powerful. And then right after the storm, movement number five is end of the storm and what happens next. So let me describe um, what I heard. As Cece pointed out, the, as well as uh, Lewis, th these speakers have this remarkable ability to bring back memories. So living back in Singapore, and any of you who lived in Southeast Asia may remember this, you had periods of monsoon rain where the, the skies open up and the rain comes down so heavily, it's literally scary. It's it's as if I don't even know how to describe it. If you don't know, if you don't know, if you never experience it, it's crazy, right? It's insane. I can see CC nodding her head. It's absolutely uh, scary in some cases. So as a little kid growing up in Singapore, I uh, when I heard the movement, the storm, it it reminded me of what I went through. 
So I played a whole bunch of different interpretations. And Bruno Walter's uh, Symphony Number no. 6, The Storm, was like the monsoon. Big, powerful, dense, dark. And then I played Von Karajan's version. Amp up the intensity. Amp it up by a factor of two. It's, it's, it's so scary. It, it, uh, here are some um, intense, violent, fervent, vivid. I mean, with, with Karajan's um, interpretation, all these memories came crashing through my head. I, I remember myself hiding under the covers as a little boy because the rain was so big and so loud. And of There's course, lightning that's and right. Thunder. The moment that these monsoon rains came, all the power went out. The entire village had, was, was, was just in darkness, completely in darkness. And then the lightning would come in, and for a brief moment, the whole earth just lit up bright like you wouldn't believe, and then went dark again, and then within seconds you heard this huge thunder, right? It was scary as all. Anyway, so I remember this, and and then while it was just raining, all you heard was the sound of the water hitting the muddy roads, the tin roofs, because back then we lived in huts that were tin roofs, and you heard this metallic bang, 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 bang. It was, it was just a racket. It was so loud that even the roosters stopped crowing. You know, and if you remember living in, 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 in third world, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The roosters constantly would just be making their noise, right? They're constantly crowing. And for that moment, they just stopped. It was insane. Um, so that was, that was the, the thing. And then when it transitioned into movement number six, it quietly went away. That intensity uh, got less and less. And then suddenly you hear a flute come in very gently through the noise. It's, it seems to just rise above that noise. And then you start hearing the horns in the background talking to each other. One section of the horn would play, and then the other section of the horn would play, communicating back to each other as if, again, it reminded me, as soon as the storm was almost over, neighbors would start peeking their heads out of the holes in the, in the siding, looking at each other, smiling because they knew it was over. And then um, the, the violin starts playing this motif over and over again. Um, and it's as if, again, the clouds are finally, uh, finally parting and the sun is starting to shine through. And all of these memories just came through uh, uh, when I was um, listening to this. Mm. Um, the other uh, singer that I played, I was asking Cece how to pronounce her name, Yao Su Ting, is a Chinese uh, singer, female singer. I came across her a few months ago on um, a playlist that uh, uh, that I subscribed to, and uh, they introduced the, the singer to me. And I remember listening through my earphones, thinking, "Boy, she sounds really nice. I'm gonna have to see if I can find it on Tidal and, and play it through the system." Well, I finally did yesterday, and I to say I fell in love is it's insane. You're falling in love with a voice. I have no idea who she is. All I know is her voice is so evocative, so beautiful. Um, as I was joking with um, uh, Louis the other day, she could sing the telephone book and I would still fall in love with it. Um, <laughs> such a beautiful voice. The, hopefully the guys can find a picture of, of her name and, and, and an album and show you and share with you and maybe you guys can, can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then my final remarks, uh, I just wrote it down here. The sign of a very good speaker is that it encourages you to pull out your favorite recordings to enjoy them, to hear more details, more soundstage, more depth, more bass, etc. The sign of a great speaker is that you keep exploring new and old recordings, new and old music. And while you are very conscious of the quality of the recording, it is second to the musicianship, the performance, the brilliance of the artists. Um, yeah, and what did I say? Oh, the Amadi G5 is a great speaker. <laughs> So anyway, that's what I thought. I, well, I, I guess liked what? It very much. I, when I was listening to it, I also wrote down my thoughts about because I'm not very good at describing my feelings and sound, but I usually do a good job when I write down my feelings. So what I wrote was, it is appealing to me when you stop thinking about what the speakers can do, what their qualities can do. Just relax and enjoy your favorite music. Be brought into the music and sunk into music. Get emotional, get loose, get relaxed, and let the music guide you, wash away your stress and tension. I think that's what a good system is worth. 
before.、Mm. So I think that's very contrasting、yeah. compared to what you wrote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we think differently. Yes. I I would think about more of the、uh, connections that I get with the music, and、uh, obviously the speakers does a good job of connecting, especially when you know that the music is well recorded, and also the singer has a lot of emotional involvement.、Mm-hmm. Uh, then you also feel the connection with the singer.、Mm-hmm. Um, my my. Synopsis was,、um, you know, the reproduction is so good.、Um, the center image is razor sharp.、Um, the sound stage is wide, high, and deep. It's everything what normal listeners, audiophile listeners, would just be amazed with. Even with the huge towing, the center stage and the, the sound stage it was so wide, which is not normally when you tow in. Um, you know, more than that's more than ten degrees. Yeah, it's、right? like life yeah. staging. Oh, it's 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 amazing.、Um, off being off track a little bit.、Um, the gentleman who came and barred the cables, he had Gershman's at home, and he heard this and he goes, "Oh wow!" <laughs> <laughs> it was a wow factor. Yeah, and that's I mean, for me, listening every day. It's still a wow factor to me. When somebody comes into the store and hears it, and he has a comparative system, and and it's a wow factor to him, to me, I know we have a winner. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I think everybody who's been able to visit us since the Amadis have been hooked up, all of them have been incredibly impressed. Everybody that I know,、uh, that I've spoken to, has all been impressed、uh, with with the speakers, which is not necessarily true of the earlier Sonus Farber designs. I'm talking about two, three generations ago. Again, play the right music with those Sonus Farbers; they were great. And then you play different kinds of music, and suddenly they fall apart. These ones don't. They seem to be able to do everything. Yeah, I'm very impressed.、Mm-hmm. I, I would say they're just on a recommendation. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's no doubt. Four thumbs up now. <laughs> Two thumbs up for you too. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, this video has gone long enough, and just in case、uh, you guys think we are always shilling for the stuff that we carry,、um, somebody made a mention of that in the last Serafino video.、Um, believe it or not, we actually. We'll tell you what we think、uh, without any um, um, censorship from me.、Um, at no point did I ever tell any of these per- people,、uh, uh, these guys, what to say, how to say it.、Um, uh, don't say negative things. They'll, they'll tell you independently and verify that.、Um, I. I Consistently tell them, say what's on your mind. Just, just tell the truth and、uh, let it be what it is. Because that's the reason for this video is hopefully we can share what we believe and what we think and share with you our joys and and also our disappointments. <coughs> So I don't honestly think I have any negatives to say about these speakers. At least nothing of any consequence. Maybe later on, who knows? But for now, I'm really impressed.、Um, I guess the last final thing is.、Um, Just to remind everybody,、um, if you like this video, share, subscribe, turn on notification, and、um, put your comments below. If you've heard these speakers, we'd love to hear from you to see what you thought of them.、Uh, and if you haven't, please go out see if you can find a pair, and then share with us what you thought.、Um, and you'll also notice one more thing.、Um, Recently, we've been able, been able to publish a lot more videos more consistently, and that's because thanks in large part to CC、uh, Tristan and Jerry because they've been hard at work editing all this content. Hopefully, you enjoy them, and if you do,、um, thank them in the comments below. It will give them more encouragement to do more for you. And once again, Adrian from Audio Excellence,、uh, CC uh, 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 Lewis, Tristan, and Jerry. Bye bye. Take care. <laughs>